Cricket and ESPN Classic. Sponsored by Computeach. Your future in safe hands. What a toss it was for Greg Chappell to win in this third test match at Trent Bridge. A beautiful looking pitch, white and very, very hard. Looked as though there were a ton of runs in it and conditions very good for batting. A few clouds around, but uh, mainly sunshine when the opening batsman walked out, McCosker and Davis. So as far as England were concerned, they'd recall Jeff Boycott. He got a tremendous reception when he came onto the ground. Very nice to see and he appreciated very much. And another new cap in the side was Ian Botham. Bob Willis bowled the first over of this third test match from the Radcliffe Road end. Rick McCosker was the batsman. Well, that's Oak Chart, uh, which has been the downfall of McCosker so many times, but he played that pretty well. Right on top of it, hit it away flat and square on the leg side. And the first runs go up on the board. stop around the corner Warmer, wonderful piece of work there and as we see this again it's interesting to note that he's moved from that uh, very close position for Hendrick and he's there for the catch behind and uh, that really was a, a wonderful piece of work well, that's a good shot Nicely through mid-wicket, that will go through for the first boundary for Ian Davis. So we're going to get the first uh, change, I think, at the Radcliffe Road end. Bob Willis, who's proved uh, fairly expensive in his five overs, cost him 19 runs this morning. Giving way and giving an early opportunity to uh, the man in his first test match here, Ian Botham. Ian Botham is the uh, leading wicket taker in the country at the start of this test match. 75 wickets he's already taken in uh, first class cricket this season. Add this to the 642 runs he's made and uh, must have a wonderful chance of reaching the double. And that's edged away and it's beaten Greg. The third slip would have been handy, instead, it's four runs. Botham could so easily have picked up a wicket here in his first over of Test Match Cricket. Not a good shot there by McCosker. He was a long way from it. Went at catchable height, uh, just wide of the fallen figure of Tony Gregg. Ian Botham. It's a good shot and it's a fast outfield out there. No chance of cutting that off. The batsmen get full value, value for their runs in this game. across the boundary. The uh, selectors of both sides just about got it right with their final selection, I think, in this game. Uh, although I'd have been inclined to play Sargent instead of McCosker. It's an equally good stroke. Not timed quite as well, but uh, it's still going to beat the fieldsman into the boundary. Excessive boundaries to Rick McCosker. It's a very good crowd in so far. Some sitting on the grass, but pretty much a packed house here. Oh. Splendid shot. It's a most superb piece of timing. Six runs to Ian Davis. Lovely, beautifully timed hook. Got it away in front of square leg and into the crowd. Shot again by Davis. Beautifully positioned there.
Four. Nice bit of footwork there by McCosker. It's interesting to look at McCosker's footwork uh, today. Um, McCosker, is, what's the back foot? This is the important one. He's taking not such a big stride there, but then he takes another one. And that's more like his normal footwork. He has been taking rather a giant stride first up. Good footwork and a good four there. runs. Uh, that's uh, quite a typical of a Costa shot. Looks as though he's uh, going to pull it in the air. In fact, he rolls the wrist on it at the uh, moment of contact. Got that away in front of square leg, which I suppose is an indication that uh, the pitch isn't quite as fast as we expected. Most of the pull shots, well, shots in that uh, area, have gone in front of square. That's a lovely shot. Now, Botham's not quick enough to uh, try bowling a bouncer. Oh, that's a good shot. Very short. Distinguished test career. This is his 72nd test match. And only Fred Truman has taken more wickets for England. Test match cricket. Derek standing on 261 at the moment. And it's a no ball. Uh, tried to flight it, overstepped the crease, and has been driven through the covers in four four runs. So from the uh, Radcliffe Road end, it's Underwood again. Well, it's in the air, and it's caught. So Derek Underwood takes the first wicket. Ian Davies out for 33. And the catch going into the very safe hands of Ian Botham at mid-on. So a fine opening partnership broken by Derek Underwood. Snapping up the wicket of Ian Davies. A little directed shot. Lofted gently in the air to mid on, and the first wicket goes down at 79. And as Brett Chapel comes out, we can see the way again that Ian Davis fell. And a very comfortable catch to mid on. A handsome way to get off the mark. Forced away quite delightfully off the back foot, and Greg Chapel gets underway with a boundary. Hendrick to bowl the uh, last over for the break. That's driven uh, quite nicely through the offside. Randall's chasing it, it's touch and go, and he's done a sliding tackle, a great piece of work there. I don't know whether he kicked the rope as well to give himself a bit more room. <laughs> but the more important factor is that it's taken Rick McCosker through to 50. So he collects three runs from that good off-drive, and Rick McCosker, such a nice fellow, such a, fellow, had such a rough time over here this season, that is going to do him a power of good. So he goes to 51 out of 93 for one. Take them just a couple of minutes under two hours, and he's hit seven fours. That's a really lovely stroke from Greg Chapel. You just can't ask to see anything better than that. He just stroked the ball away. He didn't thrash it past mid off. Just stroked it away to bring up the hundred for Australia in 127 minutes. The last 50 came up in 67 minutes. Good piece of bowling from Henrik. That was a nice leg cutter. He 
It just moved away off the seam. Brearley is going down at first slip there. But McCosca wasn't across to it. Taken very low down by Brearley. But it was a good combination. Nice piece of bowling, good fielding. And McCosca is out with a total at 101 for two. Made 51. Caught Brearley by Hendrick. And Hendrick is rewarded for being the best bowler to date in this Australian innings. Chapel's on 12, taking strike now to Willis, and there are three slips. It's a good shot, and it's a very fast side of the field that there's very little chance of a fieldsman cutting off a boundary in that area. It was well timed by Greg Chapel, but uh, Bob Wilmer wasn't all that far behind it, and that brings up. Greg Chappell's thousand runs for the tour. Oh, Willis to hooks. That's a good shot. No need to run. Uh, Ian Botham had a fairly sticky start uh, here this morning. Bolt six overs for 26 runs. Found the edge of the bat uh, on one occasion. Was short of a slip. He only had two slips. And he's got two slips again at the moment. And he's bowling, first ball. Oh, what a return. Look at Botham, absolutely delighted. His first wicket in Test Match cricket, and what a scalp to get. The Australian captain, Greg Chappell, bowled by Botham on his return at this end. The third wicket goes down at 131, and Greg Chappell, who'd never really been in the form we've been accustomed to see from him this season, is out for 19. This is the way it happened. So I delighted both of them picking up the wicket of Greg Chappell. Looks as though uh, Bob Willis is going to try and tempt him with another bounce or two. He's got two men back on the boundary waiting for any mistimed shot. And that's it, and it's a magnificent catch. An absolutely brilliant catch there. And David Hooks goes, and you won't see very many better close catches than that. Tremendous effort there by Mike Hendrick, and people really couldn't believe it. This big crowd on their feet. Ball skidded away off the outside edge, and Hendrick took a really spectacular catch at third slip. And what a tremendous change round. And this, the wicket of Hooks. The outside edge, Hooks turning around, looking almost in disbelief as Hendrick makes so much ground to that away, way on his left. And Willis to Robinson. Well, he's straight into his uh, stride. Doesn't hang about, this boy. First ball, a last over pitch ball, driven firmly through the covers for four. This is the way he plays this cricket. And whether it's a test match or a club match, he doesn't change his method or his style. Really lent into that. It wasn't by any means a bad ball. It's only just barely short of a length. He cracked it away on the up. And there's no question at all that this uh, fellow Richard Robinson is a most engaging character. Willis to Walters. And that steered away nicely again. Randall's doing the hundred in even time, but he's not going to be quick enough to catch that. So it was only just stroked away there by Walters. No power in the shot at all, just nicely timed, pushed away on the offside, and some idea of the speed of this Trent Bridge outfield. Oh, a good catch. The finer of those two gullies. Henrik has got it again. Not as good a catch as the one before, but that was superb. And the one just taken to dismiss Walters has broken the back of the Australian batting. Out for 11. 
There it is again. Never quite there in that angled bat. Very low down to Hendrick on his left-hand side at bootlace height. It's out. It's a good catch, too. Really had to move a long way to his right there. I don't think there's much doubt that was well planned. It was up in the driving area for Richie Robinson. He was playing his natural game and going for the square drive. And it was all but out of Brearley's reach at first slip. It was fairly wide. And Brearley went up high for it. And it was a very, very good catch in the end because he had both feet off the ground. Well bowled, well bowled indeed. I would reckon that's just about plumb. Looked to me as though Marsh was turning that from about middle, trying to get it away onto the onside. And it's 153 for seven. There it is again. It'll be the shuffle across the crease. And I reckon that's absolutely plumb. piece of bowling from both of them that moved very well off the seam and Walker was never quite covering it both of them has picked up his fourth wicket and Walker is out without scoring and that's how the seventh wicket went down never quite there with the bat not getting the body behind it and uh, Hendrik at slip has taken another catch that one was much more straightforward he took two very good ones early on. And the man of the moment, certainly both are making his test debut here at Trent Bridge. He has four for 38 in his 12th over. Yeah. Thompson's off the mark with four. Thick outside edge, he was never going to hand. And, uh, between third slip and gully and another excellent over from Ian Botham and that's not far away from gully Randall having to chase it might well have to give the uh, best to it this time the third man and even the speed of Randall can't stop that so Thompson collects another boundary Lovely cover drive. It's four runs. And both them off line length in this over. Two very short, and then the very generous half volley clipped away nicely by O'Keefe. Now 41 very useful runs added by these two. And it's Thompson now to face both of them once again. his fifth in the innings five wickets to date out of nine that have fallen for 196 a simple catch here to Alan Knott a gentle outside edge Alan Knott moving nicely into position tosses it high up goes the umpire's finger and Australia lose their ninth wicket for 196 Jeff Thompson caught Knott bowled both them 21 the Royal Standard going up, uh, held in the arrival of Her Majesty the Queen. Oh, that's edge plus slip for four runs. And the quicker ball from Underwood. He's looking to hit it square on the offside this time. slip for four runs and that's sliced again wide of slip so it's four more to uh, Annie Pascoe he's a 
couple down there. He doesn't look terribly happy with himself at the moment. Today was a royal occasion, and uh, both teams were presented to Her Majesty the Queen. Mike Greeley led them in the traditional three cheers, and Her Majesty was given a great reception by the crowd at the end of the eight-minute ceremony. That's a good shot from then, Pasco. Not much of a backlift, but he timed it very well indeed. The ball has gone into the rope. Derek Randall was the man doing the chasing, and Pasco wasn't quite sure if he'd uh, been given a boundary or if he had to make the extra distance. Well, it's an even better one. He saw plenty of that. It's crushed away past Randall for another four. This has been a really excellent innings from Kerry O'Keefe. A lot of uh, good common sense behind this innings. A lot of solid application. That should be it. It's caught by Greg. The last wicket finally falls. Lenny Pascoe goes. 420 caught by Greg off the bowling of Mike Hendrick and Australia at five minutes past six are all out for 243 well I suppose it could have been worse for Australia but uh, not a great deal worse the way that pitch played today I suppose there was a little bit of variable bounce early on but it really was a belter of a track McCosker 51 top score and Kerry O'Keefe an unbeaten 48 close to that only Davis and uh, Greg Chappell to a lesser extent looking to be in any real touch. The rest of them in the middle just disintegrated and uh, it was largely to do with Ian Botham playing in his first test match for England. Well, England had to survive some 13 minutes uh, at the close of play. Boycott and Brearley came out. Boycott to a tremendous cheer from the crowd and we pick up play now in Thompson's first over. It's the first ball being bowled to Mike Brearley. Well, the light uh, has certainly not worsened uh, since the Australian innings ended. But uh, such a highly seasoned and such a class player. It's his uh, 64th test match for England. And over the years, he's accumulated over 4,500 runs. 12 centuries at the highest level and 2650s. Pascoe coming into him now. Four slips in the gully. And nicely away to a tremendous roar. Moved into position, clipped it away. One's enough, he says. So that's about the biggest cheer of the day. Jeff Boy got off the mark, and he's uh, obviously even a great sour relief. Played his first test match here against Australia in 1964. Good shot. And again, he got nicely into position. Tucked it away on the offside. Uh, two runs. He's going to keep the bowling. So back on his long run towards the pavilion. Turning, ready to come in and complete this first day's cricket. Played really right behind the line, pushed away safely. The two England openers survive a very precarious 13 minutes there. And in that time, they've put together a partnership of nine runs. Five of those to Brearley, who's taken most of the pace of Thompson and Pascoe, and a single to Geoffrey Boycott. 